Hey, you made it to part 2B. Or not to B. Well, we're going to make it B. <laughs> and that is for the blog topic number two, for anointing. And that Christians are now the letters of God. So we're going to just apply these two paragraphs that this instruction is within us. It's not on writing. It's not about Bible writing. It's about God instructing us personally. And that it's from the time we're born again. Now, I have friends that are not born again. They're not born from above. They do not have the Holy Spirit. And some of them kind of think they're Christians <laughs> because they go to church or something. Uh, big, big awakening coming to them. And somehow they were told, well, you know, I just, um, I just closed my eyes one time at, at church or whatever. You know, I raised my hand, and that was it. I'm, I'm, I'm a believer now. I believe in all that Bible stuff, you know, and they'll say, oh, I, I read it every once in a while. That, that's not what a Christian is. you got to go look at the salvation page. I mean, it's very clear in the New Testament exactly how to become a Christian. But a lot of churches don't want to teach it. It scares them. They're, not, they're going to lose a lot of people. And all they care about it, really is growing their church, you know, so they're, they're all about getting attendance, and, and for a lot of reasons we won't go into. So, um, they've never been born again, so they have no ministry, they wonder why, you know, nothing really happens in their life, because the Holy Spirit's not actually in them, not coaching them, not uh, leading them, not training them, not speaking to them. They never get any visions. They never get any dreams. They say, ah, oh, it never happens to me. Well, you know, do you even really ask? Jesus talks about asking and asking and asking and seeking and seeking and seeking and knocking and knocking and knocking until it happens, right? God is looking at your heart. If you're playing games with him and you just whine and complain that, you know, you didn't get your BMW when you asked, I mean, come on. He's not a vending machine. Or a big fat Santa Claus that just, you know, unbelievable what people come up with. Well, it's poor teaching. The church is at fault because they wanted to tickle people's ears to get them to come to the church. And they don't tell them the truth. So, this is uh, from the new, from the time you are born again. You're regenerated, you're washed, you become a new creation right until, you're, until you die. And that the Lord is writing his ways on our hearts, not on paper, not on stone tablets. This is all passé. It's history. It's literally history. And what we got is a whole bunch of people going back to history instead of the present. What we, the gift of the Holy Spirit, which is signs and wonders and God teaching us directly, all taught by God. Well, that's what the promise is. The promise for you and your children for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. I mean, how do you know God's call? Because I heard him call me. I thought somebody was talking to me in the, in the library at 3 a.m. in the morning. And he was talking to me. <laughs> I was freaking out. I was like, I can hear somebody I'm having a conversation in my head. And I'm like, wow, it kind of sounds like my voice, but why would I be saying those things to me, myself? I'm like, I wouldn't say those things to myself. I mean, I, was, I thought I was going crazy. I thought, man, I studied too long. You know, it's 3 a.m. in the morning, engineering library. But the Lord said, I connected all the dots for you, but you got to take a leap of faith. I didn't want to do that, you know, and it took me a little longer, <laughs> September 28th. I know when it happened. I was at a devotional. Uh, people were just sharing how the Lord had changed their life. That, I never saw that happen. They always had Bible study, Bible study, Bible study. It never did anything for me. I mean, it convinced me mentally, but it, I could do that for the rest of my life and never make a decision. I don't think Bible study actually ever uh, re it can convince your mind, but that's not how you become a Christian. Convincing your mind. That's not faith. Okay, I know the, oh, yeah, I believe, mentally agree with. No, that's the definition in English. But pistis, 
And pastuo in the Greek means to have a conviction inside of you that you trust a trustworthy one, Jesus. I trust Jesus. I came, to, how did I get to where I was willing to give him not just my car keys, my house keys? Well, how did I get to that point? I felt his presence at this September 28, 1980. I went there to pig out and get some free food. And then they were sharing uh, how a lot of my friends, people I knew in college, they were sharing about how God really changed your life and stuff. And I, I knew these people were telling me the truth. And I just was right by the door thinking, I'm going to dart out of here because I'm a skeptic, I'm a scientist, I'm very unemotional, I'm a Spock kind of guy. And um, I couldn't, I couldn't. I, 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 felt the, I felt the presence of God. I was like, nobody even told me this could happen because these people were not very supernatural people. Um, Church of Christ, they were very stodgy, very, you know, Bible, 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 study, 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 study. They're like Pharisees, you know, scribes. But I, the Lord had an appointment. He was calling me. <laughs> he called me in the library. And then while I was there, I was going, wait a second. I am not an emotional person. And I... I was about to bawl my eyes out. I could feel him pulling on me. It was irresistible. You know, John Calvin talks about um, irresistible grace. Uh, this you know, unconditional loving favor. I could feel, I could cut it with a knife. The, the, it was like the, I was all teary-eyed. I was right by the door. I said, I got to leave. If I leave now, I might make it. But I couldn't get out of my seat. Uh, I was just watching for, from afar, but the Lord was having a conversation with me while they were having a conversation with each other, sharing their testimony or whatever. But I was over here, and the Lord was talking to me, and I was talking to the Lord, and I could not say no. I just, I felt like, I, I said, man, I'd be a fool, an absolute idiot fool. I mean, I was a scientist. I had studied everything I could about Christianity for months and months and months. Read everything by atheists, their arguments, their counter-arguments. Evidence demands a verdict. The case for Christ by Lee Strobel, a well-known uh, atheist. But he ends up becoming an amazing Christian. Got a Pulitzer Prize in the Chicago Tribune by writing about it. Anyway, pretty much... Pretty convincing in the mind, but I couldn't take that leap of faith. But the Lord knew what I needed for a leap of faith, uh, the presence of God. I felt his love, and it was so strong. I said, I would be an absolute idiot. And I prided myself, straight A student. No, I'm no idiot. I'm no idiot. I'm a scientist. I'm an engineer. I know, my, you know, I'm a straight A student. I was had scholarships, Levin's, Levin Dean's list, scholarships and everything to go to college. So I was like, I'm no idiot. And I said, man, I would be a fool to say no to this. It's so strong, the presence of God. I didn't, nobody told me this. Well, the Lord knew exactly how to get me to take a leap of faith. Because when they said, I heard, I just heard somewhere in this conversation, because I'm talking to the Lord, the Lord's talking to me, uh, just having this, this like an argument. And um, I heard somebody say, does anybody want to become a Christian tonight? Man, I threw my hand up so fast. No hesitation. Boom! Like no fear, right? Perfect love. Com this was overwhelming love. Perfect, complete is the word perfect in Greek. It was complete. I was full up. It casts out all fear. I didn't care what they had me to do. You know, I knew about baptism, water baptism, is how people become Christians. Because the Holy Spirit comes into you right then and there. I had done a lot of homework about this. I knew it. But I, I, I just was being invited, right? Boom! And I said, and one other girl, her name was Chris Otto, she did it too. And we both got baptized. Boom, boom, one, one after another. Nobody told me I would come up out of that water. I remember going down. I said, okay, I'm being obedient. I know what I'm supposed to do. I read it all through the scriptures. You know, go look at water baptism. But I didn't know. 
I was underneath the water and I thought, okay, I'm dying with Christ. I don't feel anything. I just, I'm, I just died with Christ. It's just that you're, you're joining with Christ in his death. Okay, I'm under the water. And, you know, so, okay, no biggie. I didn't feel anything. I came out of the water. Whoa, my gosh. Again, they didn't tell me. They, they didn't believe in a lot of this stuff, supernatural stuff. But I didn't know what it was either. I just know I physically felt somebody take about a 70-pound bag of sand off my shoulders. I mean, I just felt as light as a feather. Like, I thought it was going to float right out of the water when I came out of the water. I swear. I was like, wow, this is freaking me out, man. And I'm Spock. You know, I, don't, I hardly ever cry, man. I bawled, man. I was like holding it back. I didn't want to embarrass myself in front of all these people, a lot of people I didn't know. Whew! Man, I'm telling you, it just got me. I was choking it down. But I, I was like, wow. How did the, the, where does these emotions come from? I, I don't understand, but I felt so joyful. You can't believe how happy I felt. I said, I don't think I ever felt happier in my life. I, I was like, how, what's going on? I felt this weight come off my shoulders like I didn't have a care in the world, like the world could end and I could care less. So you, you, I, I highly recommend going to the water baptism page, go to the salvation page, get on this roller coaster. Whoo, man, so let's apply this. Ah, thank you, Lord, for reminding me of all this. Sanctification and holiness. Uh, we just, we, the whole, it all comes by the Holy Spirit. That's why they call it the Holy Spirit. It's the spirit of holiness. All of us want the, more of this in our life because we we are flawed, man. I am, I am seriously flawed. I can't control one thing. It seems like the harder I try, the worse it gets. So we need the Holy Spirit. If we're going to be servants of God, um, wow. Priests of God, and it's a lifetime appointment. We're all saints. <laughs> There's, it's this whole Catholic Church, oh, we, we elect such and such to be a saint. Bogus, man. The New Testament says very clearly, we are saints. We are a kingdom of priests, God's servants. So, Lord, we just thank you for showing us all this. And we want more of your Holy Spirit. We want your Spirit that sets us apart, that dedicates us, that consecrates us, that sanctifies us. What a noisy world we live in, Lord. Give us that peace that passes all understanding. It's such a noisy world. Clocks ticking away, jets constantly flying over the house. Uh, I guess it's something to do with being near a Davis Monthan Air Force Base, but also not too far away is the airport, but man, I'll tell you. And cars, never seen or heard in my life since January 20th, 2021. It's like all lawlessness of hell has broken loose. I kid you not. It's like all the street racers know they don't care. The head stinks from the head down. I'm sorry, the fish stinks from the head down. Just remember that. And they know it. I know these car racers are like, hey, look who's in control. Give us a break. We can get away with anything now. The lawless, because the head, our, our head honcho, our government is lawless. They're breaking laws left and right. Finally, the Supreme Court has to slap them on the side of the face and say, what are you breaking the law for, you bunch of idiots? Well, we knew it probably wouldn't get you know, wouldn't stand, but we just passed it anyway. You know, we we passed it at midnight. 
nobody even had a chance to read the 3,000, 5,000 pages uh, for this bill. But we passed it, and we're going to go ahead and do it. It's a mandate. We're going to just do it. We don't care what you guys think. We don't care about the people of the United States. Ah, forget it. We're running the government. We know better than you. We certainly know better than you. Hey, our bank accounts sure, surely are a lot better off than your bank account. But, hey, we won't talk about that. Um, but we, we know better than you. And we know it's probably illegal. Yeah, it probably breaks the Constitution of the United States. Probably breaks the Bill of Rights. It probably breaks, you know, a lot of laws. But, hey, you know, we're the ones in control. You guys supposedly voted us in. <laughs> we're laughing all the way to the bank. Yeah, we arranged that, too. So, hey, but, uh, you know, uh, we'll keep, we don't want to be controversial here. That sounds like conspiracy theory to me. Well, you know, after about 10 years, all the journalists will finally uh, get off the payrolls. They'll, they'll say, okay, maybe we ought to look into this. You know, that's the way it works, you know. It takes five to ten years, and then the truth finally comes out uh, after everybody's got off the payrolls of, let's just nod and get paid. Oh, yeah, we're just going to nod and get paid. That's the way it is until five or ten years later, and someone gets a Pulitzer Prize because they crack it. They crack the case, and they go, wow, look at the corruption that went on five or ten years ago. Wow, they had everybody paid off, didn't they? Woohoo! Wow, they, you know, the whole cancel culture. Woohoo! They really got a lot of people on the bandwagon back then. They'll probably save this generation. Those guys were so gullible, <laughs> the stupidest people <laughs> in any generation. They just took it hot, hook, line, and singer, a bunch of blue, bluegills, little guppies. Whoop, 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 whoop. Eat that, eat that piece of corn. Eat that little wiggly word. Hey, man, just bite the bear hook, man. We'll just stick a shiny bear hook out there, and they'll bite it. Yep, they bite it. Anyway, it'll be it'll be really funny because I've been around 62 years. I've seen how they write about stuff five or ten years ago, and then they really expose the truth because somebody's going to get a Pulitzer Prize. So... All right. Ah. Sorry, I got all off on that. Lord, what do you want to show us in drumming? And write that inside of us. Yeah, let's talk about drags. Yeah, I just, I felt, what a drag. <laughs> I'm really dragging you down the hard time. Well, that's a drag. <laughs> That's a drag in drumming, and they're very useful. Uh, I like to lead into a uh, drum fill, so I drag in, and just dragging the hand. See that? That's that likes a. It's very effective in second line drumming and and. Um, it's ghosting. It's really useful in playing a beat. You know, you drag it. Now, you don't hear a lot of dragging on this this practice pad, but if I had this off, it's 10 o'clock. I don't think I'm going to do that. I'll make it fuzzy so you can hear it. It's like a buzz. A buzz is letting it sit. So that's called an orchestral drag. Because you're buzzing. So I separated it because there is no formal connection, defined note value. It's, it's, this grace note can be as close or far away. Really close to the uh, principal stroke. This is principal stroke, or or really far. You know, almost like a buzz. So hey, play around with it. The Lord just always tells me, be like a little child. Don't be this grown-up adult 
work, 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 so stuck in a box, rigid, 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 and not learning from asking. See, little children learn from asking. Adults, oh, I got to look it up for myself. I'll read it. I don't take directions from anybody. Very proud and arrogant. So, I, oh, no, I'll, I'll research it, and then they get lost. <laughs> they go across the country. They they don't ask. Go to, you know, ask for directions. <laughs> if, the, if you never ask, the answer is always no. <laughs> you end up with no <laughs> if you never ask. So... We're looking at this drag. So we're going to ask the Lord to teach us about drags. Well, he's telling me, break it down, okay? He said, I was going to do both at the same time, and I, he said, no, separate it. you got to be open to what he shows you comes in your head. You gotta trust it. So I'm gonna just practice this, learning how to keep my grip the same, moving my my arm a little bit or twisting. I think I'm gonna just move my arm. I'm just moving my arm a little bit. You might want to just take your time and look at yourself. I'm looking, making sure that I'm not too tight, keeping my grip loose. Tension really slows you down. There's a lot of videos he told me about staying, staying relaxed, you know, peace and rest. Is, a, is one of the flavors of, of love. Love is not about tension and strain. That's work. So I'm just relaxing. Moving my arm up and down. And then both at the same time. This only goes up that high, doesn't it? So I'm just kind of going through the motions. So I'm just hearing what one part does, playing the other in the air. It's called faking. This needs to go right back up, doesn't it? If, you, if you're going to repeat it, always go to where you have to be the next time. Always be prepared for the next stroke. You can tighten it up. To see if you can really hear those double strokes too much. All these, hear all the sirens? Amazing. I mean, lawlessness. I've just never seen, in 62 years, I've never seen so many sirens. So many ambulances, so many police. I know police officers saying it's total chaos. It's just like somebody um, just opened the gates of hell. In January 20th, they all said January 20th, 2021, almost like somebody just opened the gates of hell. What happened on January 20th, 2021? Hmm. Something important. You know what it is. I talked. I just called to the police. I have police officer friends. They go, oh, hell in a handbasket. Hell in a handbasket. Just like somebody opened the keys and they go, well, look, you know, the whole thing was lawless. 
The whole event was lawless. Lawless. The whole thing was about lawlessness. And the word is out. You can be lawless. You don't need the law. They even wanted to defund the law. They said, we don't need the law. What do we need law? Yeah. Yeah, the one thing that government is supposed to do is protect its citizens. They didn't want to do it. Now, it's funny how they're changing their tune because they, we're about to vote them all out. <laughs> Everybody's like, hey, wait, we didn't, we didn't say that. Why, did, why, why were they doing that? Because they were listening to the far left? They said, oh, we don't need law. Let's, we need anarchy. Let's get rid of the law. Well, it's easy to say if you have bodyguards and you have a mansion and you have armed security and you have security systems. What about the rest of us? So you're impenetrable, but not the rest of us. We're getting killed out here. It's, it's, a, it's a zoo out there. Oh, but you're comfortable behind your mansion door, you know, and your six-figure income. And, oh, very convenient. Rules for thee, but not for me. Don't favor one side. So always prepare for what you got to do next. Let's separate it. So really separate. That just came into me. Sounds like a galloping and a one and a two and a dot 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 dot
teach me how to do that on my left side. I'm gonna, oh Lord, I just want that. I want that looseness. Oh, I want that looseness. So he's gonna, he's gonna give me that looseness. It's all about going with the flow. Let go and let God. Surrender. That's the page. Let go and let God. Surrender. Then it starts happening. So that's where I'm going to go tonight. God bless you. It's 10, 15 p.m. You have a great night. Put your ideas down here to teach one another on the comments section. And we will learn from one another. That's what this website's about, right? Read Romans chapter 12. The transformed life is not hogging the ball. It's not wearing all the hats. It's letting everybody else do it. Praise the Lord, you showed me that. It is about body ministry. We need to go back to what was given to us instead of making stuff up. <laughs> making stuff up we borrowed from the world or from the old testament which is a big no 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 you can't do that by definition right forget it right everything that's written about the new covenant said don't add to stuff from the old covenant old and new separate completely <laughs> separate completely go read new covenant go read about of the new covenant it'll blow you away god bless you and you can share your blessings below there's a button for that as well and look forward to part 3a yeah